Would I be the asshole if I called off my wedding because my fiancé doesn't want my son to bring his boyfriend to the wedding? My son was born when I was only 15 years old and I've been a single dad since I was 18. It was hard living for a long time money-wise, but I always tried to do my best by my son. Today, I own my own gym and my son is now 22 and going to college and works at my gym full-time. He came out to me when he was 14 years old and I've always been supportive of him and his identity. I've been with my fiancé for about two years and while she does come from a very deep religious and conservative family, she has never had any issue with my son. At least nothing she has ever expressed to me. My son has been dating his boyfriend since he was 18 and I've gotten to know him very well. However, my my fiance told me recently that she does not want my son's boyfriend to come to the wedding, nor does she want her parents to even get a hint that my son is gay. That if they found out, they would have a complete fit. This really bothered me because I refused to ask my son to go back in the closet. What is going to happen in the future? What's going to happen when my son gets married himself? Will they want him and his husband buried from other family events? He's my son and will be the best man and it will be unfair to deny him a plus one because her family has an issue with gay people. When I told her this, she got very angry and told me that I was being selfish and overdramatic, that it would just be for this one day and she wants a perfect wedding. I told her that this was unacceptable and that I was not going to ask my son not to bring his boyfriend. It's my wedding too and I want his boyfriend there. After that, I got the silent treatment for a day and since then, it hasn't been discussed again. However, it has left an extremely bad taste in my mouth and has been contemplating calling the wedding off. I do not want to marry into a family that would potentially discriminate against my son. I love my fiancé very much, but my son will always come first. I told my brother, and he said that I was being the asshole here, that it would just be for one day and that since my son is an adult, it's unlikely that he would have that much interaction with his step-grandparents in the future anyway. I still don't feel comfortable about the entire situation, and I'm really thinking about calling this wedding off. Would I be the asshole if I did here? Story time about how I almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend. So a little background information. I was 16 and in 11th grade. So a year before this all happened, I posted a picture on Instagram saying, add me on Snapchat if you want to be friends. Yes, I was that person. Anyway, so this really cute guy adds me on Snapchat. And after about three months of talking, he said that he wants to meet me in person. And he didn't sound sus at all, so I was like, sure. So we met at this park that was like 30 minutes away. And we met there around 6 o'clock, so when the sun was setting. And he was super nice, it was super romantic. Well, then we went to his house, we watched a movie, and we did the nasty. So after and he just goes online, pretending that he's 17 years old. So I just try to comfort him, right? It ends up working. He brings me my clothes, tells me to run or else he's going to once again kill me. So I run, I go to this gas station, get picked up by the police, find my parents. Luckily for me, I paid attention to where everything was. He was arrested. He's still in prison to this day and I got grounded for three months. Story time. And this happened to me like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> so I was driving home tonight and my apartment building is on a street that's a dead end. So I'm going to make this hair clip my car. So I was driving onto my street. So if this is my street and it like ends there, my apartment building is here. So I was coming with my car here and I turned there onto the street and I parked about here. So all I had to do was walk from here to here, which is like 10 meters. And that's like what, 30 feet or something. So it's really, really close. All I had to do was walk there. So I parked my car, I got out. And as I started walking towards the entrance of my building, a man that was actually close to my building saw me. And suddenly, he started running towards me. And as he was running, he was yelling, Shut your mouth! Shut your mouth! So I, luckily, was still close to my car. So I jumped back in and I locked the doors. And just as I did that, the man arrived at my car. So because I was already inside, he went to the front of my car, so here, and he put his hands on the hood of my car. And he was like, Get out of the car! Open the window! Get out of the car! So I was sat there, and I knew what I had to do was put the car in reverse and back out of there to go back from where I came from, because that's the only street out. So I put my car in reverse and his hands are still on the hood and he's still yelling at me and I reverse and as I'm doing that he like follows my car and is like, you know, like following my movement with the car. So I was like, okay, well I have to like really quickly like turn to go that way because if he goes to block the street, I'm stuck. Like I literally can't get out. So he's following me, his hands are on the hood of my car. I quickly turn and I get out of the street that way and I manage to get out. I then had to drive around for about 25 minutes waiting for him to leave my street so that I could park my car and go home. I'm just really tired. Like, I just really want to be able to go home without that happening. I mean, I know that doesn't happen every day, but still, like, it happens often enough that it's really frustrating. I mean, not only is it obviously scary, but it's just like, why can't we just go home without being threatened? Story time about how my family adopted me for the sickest reason ever. So I was nine years old and I started to wonder if I was getting too old to be adopted. And I started to feel really unwanted.
until this lovely, lovely Caucasian family came to adopt me. I had a new brother. They lived in the suburbs. Everything was going good. Until one day after they showed me around the house, they said, all right, hop in the car. We're going to show you around the town. Now, as a nine-year-old, I genuinely don't really care what's around the town, but I did it anyway. After all, they were my new parents. So after we're driving for about 30 minutes, I noticed the area is starting to look more and more trashy. I was getting scared that they were going to drop me off and leave me abandoned somewhere. I didn't know what was going on. So we pull up next to this corner store where this man is standing outside the convenience store. He walks up to the window. He talks to them a little bit and he looks at me and says, hi. I said, hi. He's like, so we're going to be working together. Y'all, by working together, he meant he was going to be my. There was a lady who heard this and she was walking out of the convenience store. She ran up to the window with full concern and asked me how old I was. She took me out the car and later adopted me. Those people wanted me to pay up the credit card debt. If you ever use face cream, don't do what she did. This is a horrifying story of a woman who never believed a jar of face cream could change her life forever. Oyewa was a beautiful Japanese woman married to a rich and powerful man. Their marriage seemed perfect to others until one horrifying day. This is where Ome comes in. She was jealous of Oiwa's beauty and in love with her husband. So Ome began an evil plan. She made a poisonous face cream that caused Oiwa's eyes to droop and her hair to fall out. She then gifted it to Oiwa who began using it every day without a second thought, not even checking her own reflection. Now disgusted by her, her husband began an affair with Ome. But things only get worse from here. In ancient Japan, Japan. Oiwa's husband couldn't find a way to divorce her, so he ordered one of his friends to S.A. Oiwa so that she could be framed for being disloyal to him. But the friend couldn't go through with it, so out of mercy, he hands Oiwa a mirror and tells her the truth. Shocked by what the face cream did to her, she takes the sword and unalives herself. In her last breath, she curses her husband's name. Soon, her husband and Ome got married, but on their wedding night, the ghost of Oiwa appeared before them. No matter where they went, Oiwa would always follow them, staring at them with her ghostly eyes, haunting them forever. It's a creepy lost episode of Barney that a father swears he caught his kids watching. One day he was looking at the TV guide when he saw that it said a lost episode of Barney was going to air at 7 p.m. He asked his kids if they wanted to watch and they said yes. They all sat down to watch it and the theme song started playing but something wasn't right about it. It almost sounded like the song was being whispered. The episode started as it usually did, the kids holding the Barney doll that suddenly comes to life. But when Barney started talking he sounded slightly weird. It sounded like two people were talking at once. His normal voice and one that sounded darker and scarier and suddenly he said hi kids today i'm gonna talk to you about death so one of the kids asked him barney what's death he then chuckled and said this is with his face suddenly turning angry his teeth growing long and then he eats the child and then he proceeds to chase all the other children around trying to eat them throughout the rest of the episode and then at the very end of the episode he sang the i love you song as if nothing happened so Strangest unsolved mysteries from each state. Today, we have Oklahoma. On April 9th, 1947, Oklahoma's deadliest tornado hit Woodward. The Croft family were very wealthy residents of Woodward. Mrs. Croft died in the tornado and Mr. Croft had to be rushed to an Oklahoma City hospital because of his life-threatening injuries. They had two daughters, Joan, who was four years old, and Jerry, who was eight years old. The two girls went to the hospital with their father and Joan had a very large splinter from the tornado, so she was sent to the basement for minor injuries. There, Joan and Jerry stayed the night. But the next day, two men entered the hospital wearing khaki military uniforms and asked for Joan Croft by name. They saw her, picked her up, and started carrying her away. Jerry, her older sister, started protesting and saying, you can't take my sister, but they told her they would be back for her. Two workers tried to stop the men, but then they were allowed to proceed once they said that they were family friends and they were taking Joan to see her family in a different hospital. And Joan Croft was never seen again. If Joan is still alive, she would be 77 now. Over the years, a few women have come forward saying that they think they might be Joan. The strangest unsolved mysteries from each state. Today, we have North Carolina. This story is called the Below Murders, and it took place in Windsor, North Carolina. Bilo was the name of the local grocery store, and on a warm June night in 1993, something very awful happened. A murderer hid in the store and waited until closing time. And once the crew started doing their nightly duties and cleaning and closing, he jumped out and held them at gunpoint. All of the employees were bound, gagged, and then brought to the meat cutting room. In there, he stacked their bodies and started firing the gun until he was out of bullets. He grabbed a knife and stabbed each and every victim. One of the injured employees actually managed to get to the phone and call the police before they died. When the police arrived, they were not prepared for what they were going to see, such as people lying in their own piles of blood and a man with a knife in his back. The police actually found this one man that they thought was dead because he was drenched in blood, but he was actually unharmed and still alive. The strangest part is nobody even knows who would have done this or what motive they had. The b shut down shortly after, and to this day, the police are still trying to find out who did this. Story time about how he cheated on his baby mama with me. So a little background information. There was this boy and we're gonna call him John. John and I knew each other through one of our mutual friends. Well, 24 seven, John would post sad quotes on his Snapchat story because him and his girlfriend had just broken up. 
So I decided that I was going to be Captain save -a and be there for him, telling him it was okay. And that everything happens for a reason. Well, eventually, John had developed a huge crush on me. Like, he would flirt with me 24-7, sending me all these cute emojis. And, of course, my dumbass fell for it. So after talking for a little bit, him and I started dating. Well, the one day I was on Snapchat going through his story. And he was posting a bunch of funny memes on his story, and I was just laughing. Until I got to the last thing that he posted on his story. It was this picture of a baby girl saying, I can't wait to meet you from dada so with my crazy ass i jumped on the phone and started cussing him out and then he goes what are you talking about that's my little sister like for part two part two about how he cheated on his baby mama with me so like i said when i confronted him about it he said that it was a picture of his baby sister always with the alabama shit for what reason i don't know but he calls me the next day and he starts apologizing about everything. And then he decides to make a new Snapchat account and starts talking to me on there. Thinking that I was just going to block his other account. He posts a picture of his baby mama. So at this point, my Virgo self and I were done with the bullshit. By the way, he's a Gemini. So if that doesn't explain it, I don't know what will. So I start dating my new man and I commented on all of his posts. I guess I'm not surprised she's not the only bitch you're fucking with. And if you try lying, I'm going to spill the tea. Like, I just think that it's really funny how females just think that their men are so loyal. Even when you literally expose their man with every piece of evidence. Well, the girl who sent this in has a special message for all of us. I promise you that men ain't shit. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Story time about how I found my uncle sleeping with my best friend. So a little background information. I was 18 at the time and a freshman in college. My uncle was a National Guard. And we were the same age, we went to the same school, and we also had the same friends. And while he was away, I had made one friend that he didn't know about. Her and I became best friends, we got into the same college, and we were in the same dorm room together. Well, the one day my uncle came to my college to surprise me. I ran up to him, I gave him a big hug, and my best friend was super confused because I had never introduced them. And when I introduced them, there was this weird awkward vibe. So all three of us went back to the dorm room, and I asked her if it was okay that he spent the night because I didn't want to be that person to just invade her space. So she ended up saying yes. And eventually we all got really hungry and we all wanted Chick-fil-A. So I went and I left them all alone in the room together. Like for part two. Part two about how I found my uncle sleeping with my best friend. So like I said, I went to go get his Chick-fil-A and I left them in the dorm all alone together. While I was waiting in line, I called them to ask what they wanted and nobody answered the phone. So I was like, okay, whatever, you know, it's fine. They're probably just busy talking. Talking. So I low-key took a long time because I went to the grocery store to get some cookies. I was just craving them. So then I get back to the dorm room. As soon as I open the door, I see both of them unclothed on top of each other on the bed. Doing the nasty. So for some reason, I had a broom and I threw it at my uncle and I went to my friend's apartment that night. And when I told my mom about it, she said that it was my fault because weirdly enough, they praised all the boys in my family. Crazy ass story time about how I almost got away with sneaking out. A little background information. It was the summer of my sophomore year in high school and my parents are super strict. Like they had a tracker on my phone. They had a tracker in my car. They have cameras all over my house. And my curfew was 7.30 even on weekends. Well, this boy that I really liked was throwing this party. And I begged my parents to go and of course they said no. So my friends and I came up with this elaborate plan on how I was gonna sneak out of my house and go to this party. Well, one of my friend's brothers had his license. So at 11 o'clock after everybody fell asleep, they parked in my neighbor's driveway. Before everybody fell asleep, I made sure to put my ladder up to my window from my bathroom. And because it was in the back of the house, there were really no cameras around there. Well, skip ahead, I couldn't get down the ladder. So my friend's brother had to come around and try to move the ladder. But I was still too scared to go down the ladder by myself. So her brother crawled up the ladder. And once he was on the roof, he tried to help me get down. Well, then he fell like for part two. Part two about how I almost got away with sneaking out. So like I said, he fell off the roof. Let me elaborate on that. So while I was going down the ladder, my foot slipped. So he grabbed a hold of my hand and I started falling along with the ladder. So then he grabbed a hold of the ladder, tried to pull it back. But when he did that, he flipped over the ladder. Well, he fell through this glass table that was on the deck that was around my pool. And everybody in my house woke up. My dad came running outside. Oh, and her brother wasn't moving after that.
So my dad called an ambulance and my friend who was with her brother had to call her parents. And pretty much after that, I got grounded for a full year. I didn't have a phone or anything. They took my car away. They also drilled my windows shut. My friend didn't get grounded because her parents knew that she was going to this party. Oh, and her brother was in a coma for three months. Story time, my boyfriend beat up his ex-girlfriend because she tried to kill me. So it was my sophomore year in high school and I had just gotten with this guy who was fresh out of a relationship. And let me tell you a little bit about his ex-girlfriend. So before him and I even started dating, him and his ex-girlfriend were together for like two years. And guys, this girl was fucking psychotic. Like, let me give you a quick example. Last year, I had a class with him and her and the teachers assigned partners for this one project. Well, her boyfriend got paired up with this other girl. And anybody who would even talk to her boyfriend would get jumped by her and eight of her friends. So his girlfriend starts being buddy-buddy with this girl. And his girlfriend goes, oh, do you want to come to the bathroom to hit my dab pen? So the girl says, yeah, thinking that she's being all nice and shit. So they both go to the bathroom and they're gone for like 25 minutes. So I asked to go to the bathroom because I want to see what's going on. So I walk into the auditorium bathroom and nobody's really around that bathroom. And this bitch is getting beat the fuck up. Like for part two. Okay, part two. Okay, so like I said, I walk in and this bitch is getting her shit rocked. Like there were like five girls in there beating the shit out of her. All of them just look at me, so I walk out and go back to the classroom. And the one girl went to the hospital and the other girl got suspended. So back to present day. So after school that day, I get a ride with him and his friends to his house. Well, as we're all driving to his house, we realize that his ex-girlfriend's car is right behind us. And it's literally her and all of her friends. And at this point, my boyfriend's really fed up with her shit. Because she keeps following me around school, texting me, saying she's gonna kill me, saying he got her pregnant, always says that he's been cheating on me with her. So my boyfriend pulls over the car, and at this point, I think it's a trap. I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna let me get beat the fuck up. Well, he tells me to stay in the car. He gets out and walks over to her driver's door and tells her to get out of the car. So her and all her friends get out, and one of her friends starts punching him. While he's distracted with that, his ex runs over to the car, opens the door, and pulls out a fucking knife. Like for part three. Okay, part three. She fucking has a knife up to my neck, screaming at me. And I'm staying quiet as fuck because I do not want to get my throat slit by this bitch. But all I see is my boyfriend rip this bitch out of the car and start stomping her in the fucking ground. And whenever he went and ripped her out of the car, the knife like slashed my leg open. So there's fucking blood everywhere. And we're like at the beginning of his cul-de-sac. So all the fucking neighbors are outside watching him stomp this bitch into the ground. And then one of her friends comes around the other side of the car, grabs me by my hair, rips me out of the car, starts beating the shit out of me. So then one of his friends starts beating up that bitch too. So obviously the cops were called. My boyfriend went to jail. She also went to jail. And after that happened, my parents maybe moved schools. But after that, word got around that they were dating again. Good luck to the next bitch. Story time about me being the toxic best friend. So my best friend was dating this guy for about a year and a half. And for the past six or seven months, she would say that she wasn't happy. She didn't like how she was being treated, but she couldn't leave him. Well, at this time they lived together and that night we were supposed to decorate her apartment for her birthday party. So since she was at work, she just told me to go over her house and start decorating until she got home. Well, who happened to be there but her shitty ass boyfriend. And him and I didn't really get along. Well, him and I were setting up and he was being super nice. Like overly nice, which really weirded me out. Well, later on after the party, my best friend was hammered, so we both put her to bed and started cleaning up. And we were both drunk and started flirting with each other. And then one thing led to another. And I did it with my best friend's boyfriend in her house. So for the next three months, we have like this secret relationship, like for part two. Part two to me being the toxic best friend. So like I said, him and I had this secret relationship for like three months straight. And I would always just go over to my best friend's house while she was working and see him then. Well, the one day she came home early from work and she walked in on her boyfriend and I in her bed. So after that, she finally got the courage to leave her boyfriend and now she's happily married. So I kind of saw it as I pushed her to do something that she knew she would never do. And after having my number blocked for like three years... She texts me and she says, I wanted to thank you for what you did. You showed me that I could leave my boyfriend and that you were actually just a terrible friend. But now I'm happy for her. She's living the best life that she can live and I'm still with her ex-boyfriend. 
Crazy story time about how I found my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So every year my mom and stepdad would have a Christmas party and everyone from both sides of the family would come. And I also invited my boyfriend. And at this time my boyfriend and I were both juniors in high school. So everybody came to the party and everything was going good. Well like an hour into the party all the adults were super drunk. So before we all opened gifts, I decided to help my mom clean up dinner. So while I'm washing the dishes, I look over and my aunt and boyfriend are talking a lot. And she started to get really touchy with him, but I didn't think anything of it because she was super drunk. So after I'm done cleaning up, we all start opening gifts. And my boyfriend goes up to my room to go get his phone off the charger. And after he went upstairs, my aunt was like, oh, I need to go throw up. So about 10 minutes goes past and my boyfriend's still up in the room grabbing his phone. So I went to check on him. And I walk upstairs to see my aunt and my boyfriend laying on my bed making out. Like for part two. Part two to how I caught my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So like I said, they are laying on my bed making out. Doors wide open. They don't even bother to shut the door. And both of their shirts are off. And I think I should just put in here, my aunt is like 28. She's on my stepdad's side. She's really young. So they look up and my aunt's just like drunk as fuck looking at me. And she's like, do you want to join? Like, bitch, what the fuck? So I'm just like shook. And I start screaming. Everybody rushes up the stairs. And my mom pushes me out of the way and sees my boyfriend and my aunt laying on my bed with their shirts off. So my mom starts screaming at everybody so my mom calls the cops says that an adult is touching an underage boy and she calls his mom tells her what happened so my boyfriend and i broke up so that spread around the whole school and word got out that they actually started seeing each other hey skinnies okay so today i'm gonna get very controversial i want to try out this makeup look right here otherwise known as asian fishing makeup but since i am 100 percent asian myself i have every right to do this disclaimer i'm really shitty at doing eyeliners so beware so the reason why this look is kind of controversial and problematic is because some people try to do this makeup look and they actually look asian like you can't even tell what race they are they just change so there are actually makeup looks that looks just like this which is not asian fishing it becomes asian fishing when you put on this makeup Makeup on top of wearing a kawaii schoolgirl anime trying to act like all uwu and submissive and just very stereotypical and what the fuck girl that is not cute okay so i'm done with the makeup and um why do those girls that do this type of makeup look more asian than me and i'm asian myself what the fuck this is not fair i'm so embarrassed for myself Hey skinnies. Okay, so today I'm getting ready to meet up with this guy that has been texting me for months and months now. So let's try to give him a chance. And yes, I'm eating while I'm doing my makeup because I'm f***ing starving. Anyways, somehow I'm kind of scared because this guy's been stalking me for so long. Who knows if he's a criminal. He might just come over here and put my body in a fridge. Just in case he's watching this, um, my liver and my organs are very bad. So please don't use my organs for anything. Ah, oh my god, he's here. Okay, so I'll take you guys with me. Okay, so I'm back. Ah! Oh my, oh my god. Okay, anyways, I look like a hot mess right now, but I let him hit it one time. One time! He already f***ing deleted me. It hasn't even been an hour yet. Like, what the f***? He was the one that messaged me for months, and now he's treating me like this? What? Hey skinnies! So today I'm getting ready to meet up a guy that I met from Instagram. I don't know why, but he wants me to dress up like this girl. This bitch looks kind of plain, but oh well, I don't know, that should be easy. Now, I've never seen this girl. I think she's like a straight, hetero, um, Christian girl icon. But I've seen her in a couple profile pictures, I think. No offense, but this guy's probably the most basic guy I've ever met. He's not a sugar daddy. He's not a Discord server manager. All he talks about is sports and his stupid ass, loud ass car with two seats useless as hell and he called me a femboy like what the fuck bitch you do not call me a fucking he's leaving me so many bad impressions already but honestly i'm so bored so let's risk it yeah so i'll be back in a couple hours i think i'll be back
Hey skinnies. Okay, so today I got a really interesting question. Someone said, was your life harder when you lived as a boy before than you lived as a girl now? So um, let me expose myself. I did in fact live as a boy for about 17 years. See mom, being a male is just a phase. Anyways, but not until a senior year came by and I came out as trans. But let me tell y'all, being a dude is actually very, very easy than being a girl. All I did was play video games my whole entire life. I did not care about makeup or how I look or talk about boys, oh my God. But like, like, now that I am trans, I have to deal being catcalled for the first time in my life and deal with a lot of creepy men. But at the same time, guys are nicer to me and would open doors for me. They wouldn't do that before. I guess it's harder being a girl, but am I happier? Yes. Hey, skinnies. So I hate Discord because every time I would say something, everyone would just ignore me. Like, hello, I'm here. I'm looking for people to team up with, but I found a solution. What if I change my profile picture to an e-girl? So here I am doing my makeup. So maybe I'll get at least one reply, right? Or two? Oh my god, this is so sad. The world is so f***ing shallow. Hopefully I find a simp that carries me. I'm just kidding. All of them suck. Catfishing on Discord is all fun and games until they ask for a voice chat. Like, I still can't do the cis girl boys. I still kind of sound like this. So I need to be very wary of that. I still can't believe I'm taking the actual time of my life to do this. But I just want to see if my plan actually works. So here I have my pink hair and pink cat ears ready. And let's take some pictures. So I took a couple of pics, but I end up choosing the first one. So here it goes. And within two minutes, this is what I've gotten. Wow, this, this, this is kind of really sad. One day, I got my period during school, so I had to go to the bathroom during class. So I make it to the bathroom, and then I see this girl that I've never seen before. She was just looking at herself in the mirror, and I, I've never seen her. She looked really pale and like a ghost bitch, basically. Like, a, that's it. And at first, I was like, okay, whatever. Like, maybe she just, you know, needs some sun. But then I decided, why don't I go say hi to her? Like, maybe we can be friends. And then I tap her on the shoulder, and I'm like, hi. Next thing I know, after I said hi to this random girl I've never seen, I'm on the floor with the school nurse. And then I get up and I was like, what happened? And then the school nurse tells me that I fainted. The school nurse then proceeds to ask me like, what happened? Why did you faint? Like, were you feeling weird? Is that why you went to the bathroom? And I told her, no, like I came to the bathroom because I got my period, but I said hi to this random girl and that's all I remember. And and we decided to take it further to my principal because they were like, what if this girl like punched her or something? Long story short, we found out that this girl that I saw does not go to the school. She doesn't exist. We looked through all the yearbooks. No one looked like the girl that I saw. So my principal ended up telling me, I think you need a break, country. you need to disconnect, you need to go on vacation because you're going crazy. Basically, ha! <laughs> it does not end here. So I was looking for something that would make me relax or whatever. And then I found Breakaway Beach. This is the best part. It's basically one of the largest travel student companies in North America. They're taking thousands of travelers annually across the world. Their goal is to provide an amazing senior trip for seniors. So if you're graduating high school next year, class of 2022, I recommend Breakaway Beach. It saved my life. So let's... Ah! Day, I went to Walmart with my mom while my mom and I were shopping around Walmart We realized that there was this lady following us all over the store any aisle we would be at should be behind us We're gonna call the lady that was following us Vicky Motherfucking Vicky so eventually Vicky stopped following my mom and I and she approached us and she was like Hey, I'm an agent for big agencies and I can make your daughter a star Long story short Vicky ended up inviting my mom and I to this event that would make me famous <laughs> And she asked my mom if we could go my mom felt really sketchy about it so she was like hey no i'm sorry we're gonna have to pass on this so vicky ended up walking away she was very mad and she started crying when my mom said no so after saying no to vicky um she ended up following us again but this time she had a knife with her while she was following us <laughs> 
fuck. So my mom and I decided to tell the security to walk us out to our car because of this Vicky girl and she had a knife in her hand and <laughs> so we made it to the car safe and then when we got home guess who we see vicky was in my front yard but it does not end there this is the best part she was outside of my house holding my cat my i don't know how she even got my address because she got there before my mom and i did um my cat was inside i don't know how she got her so this vicky bitch was holding my cat and we saw her and i was like dude let her go i started crying because i love my cat like and eventually my cat just ended up shitting on her. I, it was amazing. It was amazing. And then Vicky starts crying because my cat shits on her. Like you literally broke into my house and you're One day I went to my friend's house for her virgin celebration. I don't really know what that's about, but her parents have this tradition of throwing a virgin celebration if their daughter is a virgin for a whole year. Anyway, so her parents are throwing a party for her virgin celebration and I wanted to give my friend a surprise where I pop out from under the bed with a cake. Long story short, a couple hours pass by, the party starts, I go under her bed, I start prepping for the surprise, and then I see two people enter the room from under the bed. I saw four shoes. So at this point, there was two people in the room, keep in mind. So like 10 minutes pass by and then I hear clapping, bitch. My dumbass thought they were like singing happy birthday or maybe they were celebrating for something. So I jump out from under the bed and guess what I see? Oh my god. This is the best part, bitch. I see my friend getting railed by her cousin. I didn't know what to say. So I looked at his peepee -pee and I said, it's so small. We're not friends anymore. I was walking alone on the street on the way to the liquor because I wanted candy, don't worry, I'm not getting anything else. And then I saw a small envelope on the floor and I was like, I need to open it. I'm so sure I opened the envelope and it's like this number and on the top it's like, don't call or else like you'll get bad luck or you'll get killed at night. I was like, dude, I'm gonna call it. It's probably like someone's auntie. <laughs> no, it wasn't someone's auntie. <laughs> call the number, this guy picks up, he's laughing, heavy breathing. He's like, I know who you are. Thanks for calling. I'm gonna follow you until the end now. When I asked for a secret admirer, I did not mean a stalker. So now when I wanna make friends, I don't go picking up envelopes on the street like a weirdo. I go on the app Wink. You can make friends from all around the world on this app. You know, swipe left, swipe right, without having to worry about a stalker. One night at like 2 a.m., I woke up to my chair falling in my room and I was really confused because Everyone was sleeping and no one was in my room. Long story short, I ended up falling asleep again, but then I got sleep paralysis. My eyes were stuck open. I could not move, but I was fully aware of what was happening, which was really weird. And then I remember hearing this like really heavy voice saying, rebuke me now, you really can't. Like I'm here, you can't tell me to go away anymore. I couldn't move, so my eyes were literally just staring at the wall. And then I remember seeing a shadow of a little kid playing with a board, but then randomly I just woke up again. By this point, it's like 3.45 AM. I remember that because I was really freaking scared. And I got up to go tell my parents. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> So as I was walking into my parents' room to go tell them what happened, I remember I started feeling dizzy. Next thing I know, I wake up in an ambulance with doctors asking me if I'm okay because I fainted. Like, what the f This is so sus. Like, what the- Imagine we get lost in love Nowhere to go when you fall out of touch Maybe I just don't this language you call love I'll leave it to my head to think Cause right now I'm in between And really I've been scared to blink Cause I've been losing too much time to sing And all these voices in my head Like hello are you there Why do I feel alone again On a trip to nowhere and my past comes out to play Put all my fears right on display And when it comes the end of the day I hope these thoughts of you fade But I can't forget your face It's every night in the ceiling and gray I know it's bad for me But I can't help but stay away